Let's learn how to paint this beautiful hummingbird. Now I've already done a tutorial of how to paint the butterfly bush, which is the blossom that you see him feeding at right now. I've also done a tutorial of how to paint this fire red background, and I'll put links for both of these tutorials in the description below. You can use either acrylic paints or oil paints for this, and it'll work just fine. All right, let's get started any flat edge brush with some green paint. This green paint is going to be mixed with equal parts of black in it. And begin making very delicate strokes for the beak of your hummingbird. You want to turn your brush upright and just use the edge of your brush to make the outline of the hummingbird. And then you're going to fill it in by using the flat part of your brush and you're just going to outline the entire hummingbird. Now I'm just doing this referencing a picture I found online. You can do the same if you want. You can sketch it out first if you're a little bit nervous about just going for it with the paint. And so now you'll see I'm going to outline the entire bird and then fill it in with this black green mix of paint. Now the paint that you see on my palette on the right of your screen is actually all the same colors that I've used in this butterfly bush and in the background painting and I'm incorporating them all sorry I keep hitting my water bottle I'm incorporating them all into the hummingbird and this will help just tie everything together and make it nice I try to use all the same colors in my background as the subject because it just creates a nice fluidity and congruency in your work. Okay, now when painting the wings, we don't want a solid fill-in. What you're going to do is you're going to press firmly with your paintbrush at the top of the bird and then you're going to wisp up and lift off your brush from the canvas so that it just creates this wispy tapered off triangular shape does that make sense this will help create the illusion of the fluttering wings if you draw if you paint in a, a solid shape then it's just going to kind of look like the birds floating instead of fluttering so you can see I'm adding a few more layers of my green paint onto the bird, just making it nice and thick. And you want to wait for the paint to dry between each layer. And the acrylics will dry really fast. If you're using oils, which you can do the same thing with oils, you just have to wait a much longer time for your paint to dry. Now I'm adding the legs and the little feet of the hummingbird and again you want to use very delicate strokes same kind of technique that you used with the beak now I've mixed some white and yellow ochre together just a little bit of both and I'm loading that on the same brush and I'm going to pull that and wisp it up into the bird and you can see the green shows through a little bit and just gives you a really beautiful color. I don't want to cover up all of the green, but I'm going to cover up a good amount of it. But the green's going to help give me depth with the bird and I'm going to use it to continue to emphasize the shadows. But as you'll see as I'm painting this, I'm just going to keep adding layer upon layer upon layer. and in the tail there I just left a little bit more paint and I'm doing that here too same color but I'm using it a little bit more liberally to to make it lighter and brighter and more white putting some on the bottom of his head bringing it down a little bit onto the belly putting some underneath the tail
The cool thing is if you mess up, you can always just add more paint on top of it. Sometimes you have to wait a while for it to dry and it can get frustrating, but that's one of the cool things about painting is you can either fix your mistakes or make them purposeful. Now I'm going to load some white on my brush and just highlight a little bit more of the underneath of the hummingbird's belly and whisk that right into the paint above which has not dried all the way. Then I'm going to whisk it up so it blends a little bit. I'm going to define some of the lines in the tail there. Kind of just arch them toward the back of the tail. I'm going to put some to the base of the head again and hummingbirds are super colorful and they don't all have the same colors either if you if you do an image search on your computer you'll see that there are just lots of different color combinations now I'm coming up to the top of the wisps that I had done with green and I'm going to add the white to the top of those using the same technique just wisping them up you want those lines to just disappear up into the painting so you can see them at the base of the wing and then they disappear again this helps create the illusion of the fluttering keep your paint super thin now I've got some green and yellow and I'm wisping it at the top very lightly. You can see I'm barely even touching the canvas with my brush. Lightly wisp it up. Now I'm taking some violet and I'm going in the wisps that I just did and I'm adding a touch of color there so you can see the purple on the hummingbird. Oh, I love the way the purple looks. See how it's starting to come together? Now I'm adding some of that purple throughout the hummingbird. Because mine has some purple accents. Or violet, whatever you want to call it. Wisping. I'm using a lot of wisping techniques. So light. So delicate. Putting some through his face. Now I'm going to get some of that green mixed with black again and I'm going to put in some little speckles. My hummingbird has all sorts of little speckly colors all over it so I'm taking the corner of my brush to create these, the corner of the tip, to create these little dots. And I'm dragging some of the white into the dark that I've already painted, and I'm dragging some of the dark into the light that I've already painted. Now I've purposefully not let my bird dry all the way between these layers, because when I lay down the dots, I want the paints to blend a little tiny bit with each other. Now I'm getting some white on my brush and I'm lightening up that belly a little bit. Just dragging the paint, dragging the paint. If I've covered up some of the stuff that I put down before that I want to keep, I'm just going to repaint it on there. I'm going to add a little bit of lightness, light wisps into the wings. Help create the illusion of the flutter. But not only the flutter of the wings, but the color of the wings and how they look as they're fluttering. I'm taking some of that white and yellow ochre mixture and I'm a very thin line over the outline of his feet that I painted. And I'm going to create the other foot 
with some dark green black paint. Sorry you can't see what I'm doing very well, but I have just overlapped it on the bird a little bit and dragged it down. Now when you're painting the feet, make sure that you keep it so delicate because a hummingbird's feet, I mean, they're very, very weak because they're so thin and tiny. Um, I read that they actually don't like to use their feet as much as possible because they're so thin. So keep that in mind as you're painting his feet. You know, I've taken some of that dark and I'm just going over those feet again. Make sure they stand out nice and defined. You want to play around with your darks and lights until what you want emphasized is emphasized or those shapes and subjects pop. Always keep in mind where your light source is coming from. My light source here is coming from the middle and it's kind of shining up onto the hummingbird from the underneath. I'm just adding some darker detailing in I put some in the tail, now I'm putting some in his face. And now I'm going to put some at the base of the wing to help give definition to the wing. I'm fluttering it and wisping it up into the wing also. And blending it into the base of the top of the bird. Rinsing off my brush. I've left a little water, oops, dabbing it off with my paper towel. Getting some more dark green on there. Pulling it over where the leg comes out of the feathers to create that shadow where the leg it comes out of from. That will help that leg just pop right out of there. Now, if you leave a little bit of water on your brush, it will help thin the paint, but you don't want too much. Okay, I'm taking some of the yellow white ochre and just putting a little bit more detail here and there. Again, I'm referencing my picture, but I'm also adding a few things, a few colors I want to see. And it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. some of the tail. When I'm doing the tail I'm using uh, rainbow shape motions because the feathers at the tail at the be, underneath the base of the tail that you see are arched. Now I'm creating the eye. I've taken some black and the eye is, is a an oval shape so I've laid that down and I put a few dots underneath that darkening up that eye a little bit just nice and round connecting it to the beak defining my edges a little bit I'm adding some green into the eye, rounding it at the bottom of the eye. Now I'm taking some yellow green and I'm rounding that the left side of the eye, but I'm keeping still a little tiny black outline around that. Now I'm taking some of that white yellow ochre mixture, highlighting that eye just right inside that yellow green. Putting some on the top of my beak and on its head. Again, you can see that I'm using the same colors throughout the whole painting. Adding some dots with the dark green at the top of his head and underneath his beak and eye. And on its feet, just to emphasize it. Maybe it was a little too light. There wasn't enough shadow created. So I'm creating a little more. Just 
stroking some dark paint into the wings. I diluted it a little bit with my water, not much. Dragging some of the black green onto my brush again, putting another layer around the eye and on the beak. In my wing, right now I'm just going over and over parts I think need to be embellished or re-embellished or fixed. Getting some yellow green, mixing it up there. Wisping it into the wing almost connecting the beak to the wing, blending the paint, wisping it all together. Getting some of that white yellow ochre mix, putting a few more dots and wisps throughout. A little more I'm going to put some above the shadows on the feet. Light is just as important as shadow. Your values, your depths, you need to keep it all in mind. Wisping some through the tail. I'm putting some underneath the eye to help it pop out a little bit more and to help that his face look rounded so you see his jaw i'm taking some white embellishing the face the tail the belly again not letting my paint dry completely for this part because i want the colors to blend wisping a little bit more white through now the reason i'm wisping so much with this is because it will help give the illusion of feathers wispy feathers. You don't need to paint every single detail to get the illusion of it, right? Putting some under the beak and the eye. Just layer upon layer upon layer until I get all the colors and layers, shadows and light, all the values that I want shadowing under the eye a little bit and under the wing putting a little bit more dark paint at the base and emphasizing the curves always keeping in mind where my light source is coming from and how that would affect shadows if you're not sure how it would affect shadows and light and depth and value and all that. Study the objects around you and take note of where the light source is coming from and what that does to the shadows. What looks darker? What looks lighter? What looks defined? What looks blurry? And I'm just adding a little more definition here and there with dark and light. Are you falling asleep? This is kind of relaxing me. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> Taking some yellow ochre and some white and wisping it up and around. I also want to keep in mind where the rounded parts of my bird are, where the, the flatter parts are, where is its jawline, where is its bulging belly, what do I need to do to define those? And then I just keep layering and layering and layering, putting a few more dots that I had covered up. I'm using actually for these dots, I'm using a very tiner, tiner, tiny liner brush and I'm just using the very tip. And I'm using the dots to also add definition of where the rounded parts 
the rounded edges of my bird meets. So it might look a, the the dots may be a little bit more full where the lines meet or where the bird curves or where it bulges it might be you might paint the dots a little more sparsely and that can help it look a little lighter all right i am done guys Woo! sorry trying to get control and there is our hummingbird isn't he beautiful I thank you for watching this with me guys i loved this painting i loved creating it and I loved how peaceful it made me feel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and want more tutorials like it. Also don't forget to subscribe. Join me on Facebook. Just type in Her Art From The Attic and we should pop right up. You can also find me on Instagram at Her Art From The Attic. And if you want to adopt one of my paintings, come visit me at HerArtFromTheAttic.com. Alright guys, have a good day. Bye!